Shit, which one of us is starting? <laughs> Welcome to Two Idiots and a Dog, Idiots Unleashed. Um, What was our opener this week? I thought you were going to get one. No, it was your turn. No, it was definitely your turn. <sighs> no, it wasn't. You're an idiot. It was your turn. You're an idiot. And no, it wasn't. It was Kaiju's turn. Kaiju, where is our opener? Oh, she says she ate it. <sighs> That's my line. I'm Grim. <laughs> uh, I don't even know who I am anymore. I am Kaiju's human. That's who I am. Ew, you're human? Gross. Uh, at least, you know, ostensibly. Just a quick warning, this is an uncensored podcast, so you may hear adult language or other content not suited for children, the workplace, church, or, frankly, human consumption. This week our topic is origin stories, or, hey, I've seen this one before. Who the fuck submitted this shit? You. I did? Yes, this was your idea. Wow. That's the kind of thing only an idiot would submit. Right? Well, if you have an idea for a topic for us, you can let us know on our Discord or social media, but you can only vote in the topic poll on Discord. Now stand back. Because the idiots have been unleashed for way too long. Um, God help us. (sighs) Okay, so origin stories. Uh, This is mostly going to be talking about superhero origin stories in movies, but it's kind of an overarching thing even outside of superhero movies let's see how many video games have been rebooted to retell the same origin story over and over and over again oh yeah uh way too fucking many of them and one of the problems is origin stories even when we're not like okay say retelling spider-man's origin story over and over again for like the fifth time origin stories there is a formula to them that they are so overdone. You know, look at the MCU. I mean, that, that's a whole other topic on its own. It's just the MCU. But specifically, the origin story movies in the MCU. How many of them have these like formulaic beats that they hit every single time in every single origin story movie? Protagonist before everything starts. Protagonist encounters Thing. Protagonist must be shaped by Thing to become the hero we know they must be. Protagonist is now the hero. Well, and there's always a moment of doubt. There's always their powers not being good enough for whatever reason and them getting their ass kicked or things like that. There's always these elements of... (sighs) If we don't know what the story is, then there's a little bit of drama there. But when we know it is a, especially like an MCU superhero origin story, we know that our hero is going to overcome the adversity of insert problem here. We know that our hero is going to say, I am good enough. I can do this. and. That doesn't mean that anything that has those questions is bad, but they need to be done well. And don't get me wrong, some of these origin stories have been done well. Even the retelling ones have been done well. Um, The Tomb Raider reboot franchise was exceptionally well done, in my opinion. Uh, The Batman Begins trilogy, yes, it kind of ended on a eh note, but Batman Begins was a solid retelling of the origin story that gave us enough stuff to keep us really interested in what was going on instead of just being like, oh, okay, it's the same thing 20,000 times. But the fact remains, it was still a retelling of an origin story that has been retold across media time and time and time and time and time. Again. When you say Tomb Raider, do you mean the video game or the new movie or newish movie? 
I don't know shit about the movie. I'm talking about the games. Okay. And I don't know shit about the games. I don't play them. But the new movie was actually pretty good, too. The the new Tomb Raider uh, games, the, 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 the rebooted franchise, humanized Lara in amazing ways. It was really well done. But at the end of the day, it was still them being like, we're just going to retell you the story of the Tomb Raider. And I'm like, yeah, OK. I mean, sure. Why not? We already mentioned it in passing, but Spider-Man. Over and over and over again. And, and every single time it's like. They never even do anything new with his origin. They 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 take his comic book origin and pretty much follow it beat by beat. Other than sometimes they leave out Gwen Stacy. Sometimes leave out Gwen Stacy. Every once in a while, they'll change who killed Uncle Ben for dramatic effect. Like, but but all in all, it's the same fucking thing. School trip, spider, weird fucked up nightmare, wake up, superpowers, cool, wrestling gig, awesome, let guy escape, guy kills Uncle Ben, Peter feels guilty about it, becomes superhero. Because with great power comes great responsibility. I, I I could fucking set my watch to how that origin story plays out. And as a quick aside here, we do have to give credit to the MCU slash Sony Spider-Man franchise that is running currently with Tom Holland in that they didn't do Peter's origin story. They're like, everyone knows Spider-Man's origin story at this point, so we're not going to include it. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things I really liked about the Batman is there were, it was in there, but it wasn't like the whole focus. Yeah. They showed his origin as occasional flashbacks in what he was doing, as opposed to the movie being about him becoming Batman. Yeah. When that movie starts, he's already Batman. This is like, Uh, I think, what was it, two years, they said? Year two, Batman? Yeah, it was year two, Batman. And that is a much more interesting story to me than going over his origins again. There are, of course, some properties you have to do the origin story with because they're not as popular with mainstream. Moon Knight. And, of course, with Moon Knight, they also did his origin outside of the formula of superhero origin stories. But also, here's the thing. They don't have to do origins for even not-so-popular properties. Werewolf by Night. Well, the thing of it is, Werewolf by Night is is fairly plug-and-play. There's... Which I still need to watch, by the way. It's great. I just haven't been in a headspace for a lot of stuff. You're going to find that's a recurring theme on this show, by the way. I'm just not in a headspace. Jazz hands. But like uh, Kamala, Miss Marvel, you you need an origin story for that. There is way too much going on there that needs to be explained, especially with all the changes they made, which I'm still... But we're not going to get into that. You know, there's a lot of DC properties that if they ever bring them into the main movies that you're going to need to spend a little time on. But likewise, there's a lot of stuff that they didn't. Uh, Black Adam had quite the cast. There were a couple of characters. They took the time to be like, kind of give them an origin. You know, the one guy is like the nephew of the original guy. Uh, The other one was experimented on with nanites, blah, 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 blah. And of course, Black Adam's origin is front and center because it's his fucking movie. But like, they never explained Dr. Fate. They never bothered to explain Hawkman. They were just there. Well, and of course, that's a standard thing in a semi-ensemble movie that's focused on a singular character. It's very rare that the other characters get their origin, too, outside of maybe a quick nod. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping that we don't end up with a Doctor Fate and it's a prequel origin movie. And I'm just like, we don't need that. We do not need that at this point. I, I Okay. Elephant in the room time. I'm sick of origin stories. Yeah, origin stories are. It has gotten to the point where even when it's a 
character that we kind of need the origin for, like Shang-Chi. Oh, yeah, that one needed to be told. But at the same time, it was like, okay, this is an origin story movie. I know the exact beats it's taking. I know what it's doing. I know where it's going. And I felt like even though it was needed, the movie was worse for being an origin story. Yeah. Hey, how many times are we going to do Punisher? How many different variations on Frank Castle's family getting killed and him snapping and going on a killing spree uh, are we going to sit through? Well, and of course, the th- problem is they have to update him every time they redo him because wasn't his original war the Korean War or was it Vietnam? Uh, Vietnam. It was Vietnam originally. And here's the thing. This is another element that's that the, the, the latest iteration of him, which we still haven't seen the new new one, but like the, the formerly MCU Frank Castle. They stripped a component of him out completely, which I think ultimately, I get why they did it, but I think it hurts the overall themes of the story, in my opinion. Which that was him being a cop, correct? Yeah. Uh, So he did serve, and then he came home, and he became a cop. And it was as a cop that everything went pear-shaped. And I feel like this this cop, like, again, I get why they didn't do it for, for Netflix, but... You've got this soldier who became a cop who believed in the system, and then the system straight up fucked him. It let his family get killed, the whole nine yards, and he goes, nope, I'm done, and they're done. It's a compelling story, but it's also one that we've seen fucking repeatedly. And especially when you consider that not only have we seen it repeatedly with Punisher, but we've seen that story a million times outside of Punisher too. Oh, yeah. I mean, how many action heroes are just cop has a bad day and takes the law into his own hands? I mean, the classic, the, you know, one of the ones that eh, maybe not so much anymore, but it used to be if you were thinking of the tough, badass cop movies, it was the first one on your mind. Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry, uh, Lethal Weapon, to a limited extent, but not as much. Die Hard, more more the 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 sequels than the first one. The first one, he spent most of his time trying to de-escalate that situation, and and then finally just went fuck it. <laughs> as we talked about when we did that episode, yeah, but yeah, it's like that. That's the story of Punisher is one that we have seen so many times. And especially you start also factoring in the the soldier aspect of it. You can look in at so many of them where it's a retired soldier who does that. Some of the later Rambo movies. Rambo movies. And as a quick note, if you have somehow not seen them or don't realize that we know we I specifically said later movies, the very first Rambo movie, First Blood, is not like that. And it's an amazing movie. It's and worth watching if you haven't. Yeah. No, there's there's so many cop goes off the rails, uh, retired military goes off the rails, you know, such and such has just is, has enough and isn't going to take the system anymore and, and takes mayor of matters. That is just a, a Hollywood action movie anymore. Yeah. So like the the Netflix version of the origin story almost worked. But they made it so much a part of the central plot of that season. Like, I, wa- I, I didn't want to see Frank then. I wanted to see Frank, like, three years down the road. And he rolls into New York. And he starts laying down with his version of the law. And, and, and they have to sit there and be like, okay, who is this guy? Oh, oh, wow. His whole family was killed and he's been just playing vigilante ever since. Damn, that's fucked up. Okay, let's go stop this guy. Like, that's all it needed. Now, don't get me wrong. The story they told and the way they told it was still good, but it's, again, it's it's an origin story we've seen before. Yeah. And speaking of Netflix ones, do not get me started on Arrow with Glowing Fists, a.k.a. Iron Fist. You mean, you mean Days of Our Fist? Yeah. 
I mean, I mean, shit. Okay. Arrowverse in general, moving over to the Arrowverse. Arrow, we needed to set up the whole fucking TV universe, right? But even then, it was Batman with a bow. We've seen this story. Uh, the Flash, or uh, like the entire first season is pure origin fluff. Yeah, and it's, how many of the TV shows do they turn their first season into an extended origin story? Like, okay, if you want to do the origin story in your TV show, two episodes. Yeah, two tops. Get us, get us established. The the entire. Oh God, I it's just. Um, I mean, Legends of Tomorrow was one of my favorites because it didn't really have origin stories. It was an ensemble from pre-established characters, and they didn't go over everything again. And I enjoyed it more. Also, it didn't take itself anywhere near as seriously as the rest of the Arrowverse, which was appealing to me. Also, they later added John Constantine, which um, eh, one of my favorite characters of all time. So eh, that's neither here nor there. I mean, uh, okay, origin stories. John Constantine. They added John Constantine to that show because his show was basically sent out to die. But the character received such a positive reception, they wanted to keep going with him as played by that actor. So they put him on their hodgepodge mix of, hey, we have got a bunch of leftover DC characters show, Legends of Tomorrow. I'm sorry, that's what it was. And they retouched on some of it a little bit and made it a a, a, a subplot of one of the seasons, but it wasn't all origins all the time. Like the first time we meet him, he just shows up, does his thing and leaves. That's it. That's our introduction to John on that show. Uh, that's what they did with him on arrow as well. He showed up, did what he needed to do and left. Uh, they didn't spend forever. When they finally got to John's origin story, it wasn't an origin story so much as him explaining why he's so fucked up. <laughs> and, and that was compelling to me. But so many of these properties, and yeah, it's more egregious in the superhero circles, but you do see it elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, like we just said, action movies. Mm-hmm, action movies, yeah. And if they don't give you the origin story, what do they do? Oh, this property is taking off. Okay, we're going to release a prequel. That is the origin story. Uh, yep. Ugh. I'm so tired of origin stories. I don't want to watch the origin story. I want to watch the or what the origin story leads to. Yeah, it just it gets tiring. And like I say, I've seen this movie before. I've got a writing project I've got lined up. And unfortunately, yeah, um, that's largely going to be an origin story because I'm setting up a whole new universe and I don't want to do it, but I got to. Because it's a new property nobody's ever heard of. Characters nobody's ever met. But it doesn't mean I want to do it because, like I said, I've got origin fatigue. And then really what it comes down to is how you're going to do the origin, I guess. Because, like, so many of them are just, here's the origin story. Learn who they are as they become who they're meant to be. And I'm just like, I'd rather learn about who they are by just watching them do their thing rather than watch them learn how to do their thing. Fun fact, the superhero writing project that I have in mind that I want to work on, I, I don't really do any origin stories in, in it. The, the, only, the only Batman origin story that I liked was not Bruce's origin story. It was Terry's from Batman Beyond. And again, it was... One or two episodes to set up the premise, tell you who this kid is. Okay, cool. Now you're just Batman. And you've got old Batman in your ear. Fucking loved it. Hey, DC, get, bring back Batman Beyond. Not necessarily as a TV show, though, because, I mean, Kevin, Kevin Conroy wouldn't be the same. But... um more, more, more Batman Beyond stuff. Give us a Batman Beyond Arkham game. I'd play the hell out of that. Give us a live action Batman Beyond movie with Michael Keaton. 
Ooh, that could work. Or if you give it a few more years, bring Ben Affleck back. He did a wonderful grumpy old Batman. Honestly, I think Affleck could do it now. Affleck is not a young man. No, but I don't think he's quite old enough to be retired Batman. You know what I mean? I mean, I guess they could play with why he's retired a little bit, but. Because the thing of it is, Batman, Batman, yes, we're going on a tangent. And no, I'm not going to edit any of this out because we've ranted about this topic for like 20 minutes and we're kind of running out of gas already. Because honestly, slight spoiler behind the curtain. Neither of us were really that keen on this topic. <laughs> no, I am actually appalled to learn that this was my suggestion. Kill me now. So the reason in Batman Beyond that Bruce stopped being Batman is he had a heart attack in the field. And it wasn't that he had the heart attack. It's that he had to pick up a gun to fend off an attacker. And that is when he hung up the cowl. If you're not familiar with Batman lore, he is extremely anti-gun, at least in current iterations. Yeah, um, there was like a brief little bit in his first original origins where he had a gun or would sometimes use a gun for certain things. But no, he, he, he's very anti-gun. And again, you could play with that a little bit in a, in a live action with like Ben Affleck or something. Because again, his, his grumpy old Batman was good. It was one of the good things from the DC movies. It's just most of the casting in the DC movies were good. The script writing and directing was terrible. And also we had how many origin mo- stories out of those movies. Bleh. Granted, Wonder Woman was still very good, but it was still an origin story. Ah, oh, so many origin stories. And I, I like I, I kind of get it. You know, you got to establish these characters. You got to introduce them to the audience and tell us who they are and walk us through everything and blah, 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 blah. But like, there's a lot of these properties that you don't, and we've already named off several of them. Uh, and frankly, I think at this point, if you're a member of the justice league, you don't need an origin movie. I genuinely think that I I genuinely believe that if you're big enough to be one of the, like when you think justice league and you're thinking those, those main guys, they don't need an origin movie. We know who the fuck they are. Actually, I have to disagree because you know, a lot, you know, a lot about DC outside of the big names of the justice league. Superman, Batman, The Flash. There's a lot of them that I don't know the origin. Okay. Uh, do you know who Cyborg is? Um, yes, but I know Cyborg because I watched Doom Patrol. And I also watched the Justice League movie. Outside of that, I did not wa- know Cyborg's origin story. Okay, but you don't need to know Cyborg's origin story beyond just maybe a quick flashback of, hey, yeah, I got blown the fuck up and my weird mad scientist dad put me back together. That's all you need. The Flash, everybody knows who the fuck the Flash is. Green Lantern, everybody knows who the fuck Green Lantern is. Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, everybody knows who the fuck they are. You don't need to retell us who they are. Even if you don't know their origin story, that doesn't mean you need to be told who they are. And that is really the point of an origin story. These characters are well established by now. Treat them that way. And switch it back over to the Marvel side. Yes. How many times are we going to learn about Spider-Man's horrible, tragic backstory? The Punisher. How many times? It's not quite as much origin story, but how many times are we going to do the Sentinels and the Mutant Registration Act and all that in X-Men? Yeah, uh, just over and over and over again. Avengers. Okay, let's take a look at this. All right, Hulk. Everybody knows who the fuck the Hulk is. Thor. Everybody knows who the fuck Thor is. Iron Man. Everybody knows who Iron Man is. Captain America. Everybody knows who fucking Captain America is. Why do we have origin movies for all of these characters? 
We know who they are. The ones who arguably needed the origin stories were the ones who didn't get them. Hawkeye and fucking Black Widow. You know, fun little fact, actually. Prior to the Iron Man movie, Iron Man was not very well known in the larger pop culture. That's just because people weren't paying attention. Well, no, my, my point is the, the pop culture osmosis we get of characters like Spider-Man and Superman and Batman. That didn't apply to Iron Man. Because he was big in comics, but he wasn't like he wasn't outside of comics big until the movie. Y'all need to watch more Saturday morning cartoons is all I got to say. Oh, wait, those don't fucking exist anymore. Claire's at the networks. Like specifically Iron Man. When they made his movie, he needed an origin story to work. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. No, you didn't. don't think he did because y- you were already a nerd. You have to remember that movies, they are targeting, especially back when they made Iron Man. They weren't just targeting the comics fans and the, the existing nerds. They were going for mainstream popularity. Okay, well then by that logic, everything should be a fucking origin story. No, because Superman does not need an origin story. I, You walk up to anybody on the street and ask them Superman's origin story. And at this point, every single person you ask, barring like a few random exceptions, and they probably wouldn't go see a superhero movie anyways, can tell you Superman's origin story. Same with Batman. Same with Spider-Man. There are plenty of heroes who are large and established enough that no, they do not need an origin story movie. And Iron Man was fucking one of them. Just because you're not aware of his origin story doesn't mean it's not out there. Uh, No, I was aware of his origin story. My point was that there were actually a lot of people who weren't. I'm just going to disagree with you on that. He didn't need a fucking origin movie. 15 years ago, he did, yes. Don't fucking tell me it's been that long. It has. God. Maybe even longer. Kill me now. Just erase me from existence. Smite me into oblivion. I'm fucking done. Uh... Okay, no, I'm sorry. It hasn't been 15 years. It's been 14 years. That is not better. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Tune into Idiot, Two Idiots and a Dog. Idiots Unleashed this week and listen to Grim experience an existential crisis in real fucking time. God. Now, I will say that at this point, if they like rebooted the entire MCU and did a new Iron Man. First of all, it would be a huge mistake, but at this point, no, he does not need an origin story movie at all. I mean, like there's, there's a couple of um, Black Panther absolutely needed to be done, but they did that one backwards because they introduced us to him in a completely different movie. And then they gave us the, the story. Captain America didn't need one. They gave us one anyway. Yeah, I will agree. I don't think Captain America needed one because I I am pretty sure most people, if they didn't know the details of his origin, they at least knew that, hey, he was a super soldier from World War II that got frozen. Oh, who lives as a capsicle under the sea? Stephen Raj. Okay, I'm done. Uh, get out. (laughs) Yeah, Thor. Okay, if you don't know who fucking Thor is. How? Yeah, and especially because 
Now, one of the things I will point out is that the MCU Thor is actually different from the comics Thor. Yes, but all you need to do is establish those differences. You don't need to go into a full bore fucking origin story like they did. Well, and that and that's all. That's also just it is the way they made Thor in the MCU. He doesn't need the origin at all, and it's like they set it up like, oh, he's they they set him up to have the comics origin without actually having the comics origin, if that makes sense. They made him depowered because he was unworthy. So we get this origin story of literally who he's been since birth. It it would be one thing to do an origin story if they actually used his comics origin of him being a human on Earth who gets the power of Thor when he wields the hammer. Yeah, but even the comics have gotten rid of Donald Blake at this point. Now, did they get rid of Donald Blake um, before or after the movie? Before. Very before. Donald Blake hasn't been around in a while. They got rid of Donald Blake before Civil War, man. And I mean the comics Civil War. So at this point in the comics, the Asgardians are basically gods. To, are they, are, the Asgardians are the Asgardians. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Which means you need an origin story even fucking less. Like, you literally just need, like, I'll be honest. For a character like Thor, his entire introduction to the fucking MCU would have been, could have been his introduction in Avengers, where he just shows up, pulls Loki aside, and then gets in a conflict with Cap and Iron Man. It's Thor. And you know what? They could take like five minutes and just be like, yeah, your people you have revered us as gods, uh, so? That sounds like a you problem, not a me problem. <laughs> Doctor Strange. You need to explain where he came from, but you don't need to fucking show us. You know, what's going to be really fun is if they do bring bring X-Men into the MCU, we're going to get to sit through the whole fucking mutant fucking origin story bullshit. And we're, we're probably going to have to deal with the Mutant Registration Act, even though by the MCU's rule, or by what's happened in the MCU, it shouldn't happen. But it's going to. Because they don't know how to tell an X-Men story without it. Yep. Admittedly, the... the Telling the Registration Act once in a media, like the original set of Fox movies. Cool. Because it is an integral X-Men story. As someone who grew up watching the comics, reading the or watching the car- cartoons, reading the comics, to me, the Mutant Registration Act is like Batman's origin story to you. It just, it's so overdone. Especially because the cartoons, it's like they would do get to that, and then that's when it stopped. Yeah. Uh, one, one time at a Comic Con, I'm pretty sure it was my sister who had a Q&A with, about an animated X-Men project, asked, So, when are you going to get past the Mutant Registration Act? <laughs> They did not take kindly to that question. Fatality. Flawless victory. <laughs> um, the Abrams Star Trek movies, which have problems we're not going to get into, but I'll give them a pass on the origin story thing, if only because they took things in such a different direction. Well, yeah, because the, the Abrams Star Trek movies, they were a diverging timeline. Yeah, so like I will I will let them have that. But even then, you're on thin ice, buddy. You're on thin ice. We're watching you. I got my fucking eyes on you. Um and then of course those movies went to complete shit, but <clears throat> said I wasn't going to get into that, so we're not going to. Origin stories exist for a reason, but oh my god, they are overused. And I think that's what it boils down to is it's just origin fatigue. Yeah, I think origin fatigue is actually a part of the Marvel fatigue we're experiencing. 
because we're really introducing so many new characters that it's like, not only do we have the formulaic problem of the MCU, because the MCU is very formulaic, but then now we're also dealing with the fact that, oh, well, we just introduced She-Hulk. We have to give She-Hulk's origin. We just introduced, or we're introducing Ironheart. We have to give Ironheart's origin. We have to do all of these things. Uh, Ms. Marvel, which again needed to happen, but still, I just, origin fatigue. Origin fatigue! Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel. And yeah, Captain Marvel needed to happen too, because. Yep. You know, especially the uh, comics iteration or that comics iteration of Captain Marvel, a lot of people have no idea who they are. Yeah, it. I find it incredibly impressive that they have taken a storytelling device that is meant to introduce new concepts and have managed to make it such a by rote experience that it brings us nothing new. Yeah. And I think that's the paradox. Because there is... There's nothing new in origin story movies anymore. It's, and especially not superheroes. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've got several superhero projects, one of which I'm probably never going to get around to telling because I, it covers a perspective that I have not lived. I think it's a really compelling one. I've told you about it in private. I'm not going to get into the details on the episode because that's not what this podcast is for. Yeah. But if I ever did get the writing partner I need for that project, the one who has lived those experiences, like we still got to do the origin dance and it sucks. Cause again, Everybody was going to, at this point, the origin story is required, but at this point, the origin story really just brings nothing. Yeah. And I don't know how to fix that. And honestly, as a, I wouldn't say I'm a fledgling writer because I've been writing for decades. I've just don't have any of my work out there. Not really. I don't know if I, I think it would be conceited of me to sit here and be like, I will fix the origin story. There's a certain level of ego to that, you know? There is. And of course, like I say, you, there is a way to do an origin story without covering the same formulaic ground that so many properties use. And there is also a way to, there is also a way to tell the story of a new character without making the story you're telling their origin story. You can cover certain aspects of their origin throughout the course of telling the story so that the people con- consuming the media can piece together what their origin is. I mean, you know, you do, let's take the Batman thing, right? Okay, you got Batman, he's doing his Batman thing. First of all, his origin has been around enough people know it anyway, but let's pretend you just, you got to hit the buttons anyway, right? Because that's how Hollywood works. Alfred drops food off at his at his workstation down in the Batcave and makes some remark about, listen, I know ever since your parents were killed by that mugger, you've been obsessed with this crusade, Bruce, but I still need you to take care of yourself type of thing. Like, th- th- throw a couple of lines like that in there. That's all you need. But you do have to watch out for the, as you know, trope. As you know, Master Bruce, crime in Gotham has been on the rise since. Is your name Alfred or Exposition? <laughs> I want to make a tongue in cheek, a tongue in cheek superhero property where there is a character whose name is just Exposition, and they just spout off anything that the audience needs to know. Unfortunately, Austin Powers beat you to it. The guy who gives him his mission briefings is named Basil Exposition. 
I refuse to accept that. <laughs> I refuse to accept the existence of Austin Powers. Uh, I can't blame you there. Those movies have not aged well. Those movies did not age well when they were released. Yeah, well, your face. Has also not aged well. No, no, it has not. I guess the point here is origin stories are a necessary evil, but we need to really re-examine the way we've been telling them. And maybe we have a few less of them every now and then. That's it. That's our new project. We're going to tell the origin story of the origin story. Okay. Origin story of the origin story. Hero's journey. Yep. I mean, it's basically it. I think that's part of it is the origin story is a condensed version of the hero's journey, but it doesn't actually have resolution because it's the origin story. It is the start of the story, not the finish of the story. So it doesn't really work. Meh. The origin story is the first act of the hero's journey. But we keep presenting it as it's as a full story. We, it's a full movie. It's a full game. It's a full book or comic or set of comics because comics are for long form storytelling. You need multiple issues, or you release a a chunky graphic novel thick enough to kill a puma. Sometimes you just got to kill a puma. I'm just saying. That's a Lewis Black reference, by the way. Before anybody. Like, that was a reference, not me ripping him off. You know, now I'm sitting here thinking, I might need to look into what exactly constitutes as the hero's journey. Because the way a lot of the superhero origins play out, I think they actually do fall under the entire formula of the hero's journey. Yeah, but... Then they're like, oh, but that was just the start of the story. And it doesn't work then. Because you've told the story. And now you're saying that that's not the story. No, because part of the hero's journey is it's not. The hero's journey is not necessarily that character's only story. I don't know. In any event, it gets told too much. To the point where there is a... (laughs) We have the monomyth. We have a term for it. The hero's journey. That's how many times the story has been told. Oh, yes. All right. Of course, you you really stop and break it down. And if you're looking at beats and concepts as opposed to like hyper specifics, how many stories actually are there? Hmm. Listen, people go to college to figure that shit out. We're just a couple of idiots. Kaiju, how many stories are there? Was a story. Can I eat it? I mean... Technically, but... Paper's not good for you. Uh... I just... We either need a new way to do this, or we need to just not for a while. And I don't know what the answer is, because, as I said, we're just a couple idiots. Clearly, the answer is the hokey pokey. That's it for this week. (laughs) (laughs) If you like what we do, please give us a like, follow, rating, all that nonsense in your favorite podcatcher. You can also support us on Patreon for special bonus content and episodes a week early, or tip us on Ko-fi. You can find those and our social media platforms and Discord server all in the show notes. Also be sure to give our friends some love, whoever the fuck that ends up being. Eh. Hi friends, my name is John Wesley, and I'm the host of the Sense of Shelf podcast. When you're done listening to the show you're listening to now, feel free to come find me as I talk about books and authors and talk to people about their favorite books and authors. So again, that's the Sense of Shelf podcast. 
It's available on most, if not all, podcasting platforms. And you can find me on social media, Instagram and Twitter, at Sense of Shelf Pod. Thank you and enjoy your podcasts. Last, but certainly not least, we want to give a quick shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon and Ko-fi. Especially these idiots. Random Warrior, Rain, and the perpetually banned Athen Mortis. That's right, your hiatus is over. You're banned again. You know what you did.